Chinese firms frequently sell foreign assets to repay debts, sparking concerns about spillover effects overseas. Truly out of money, netizens flood CCP Ministry of Finance account on fifth day. Nearly 70% of people refuse to watch CCTV Spring Festival Gala. It's only for party members. Angela Chow, sister of Elaine Chow, dies in tragic accident. The CCP's East Factory military expansion, Xi Jinping's chief secretary plays a ruthless role. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Chinese firms frequently sell foreign assets to repay debts, sparking concerns about spillover effects overseas. According to a recent Bloomberg article, due to incomplete data, market assessors are currently finding it challenging to make accurate judgments about the impact of the Chinese real estate market's decline. Overseas regulatory agencies and markets are worried that this situation may mask the spillover effects of the Chinese property crisis. The report indicates that Chinese real estate companies acquired large amounts of overseas assets during the expansion period of the past decade. Now, these assets are returning to the market as Chinese real estate companies are selling off overseas assets to ease their debt repayment pressure. For example, a subsidiary of China's Agile Group sold a piece of land in Toronto at the end of last year for about 45% less than its purchase price. This real estate company is currently undergoing debt restructuring involving a sum of $6 billion. As one of the leading real estate companies in China in terms of sales performance, Country Garden also sold a real estate development project near Sydney, Australia, for $240 million Australian dollars, approximately $157 million US dollars, on January 26. At the same time as the company completely exits the Australian market, there have been reports of Country Garden's decision to withdraw from the UK market. Additionally, Country Garden's real estate development project worth £450 million, around US$567 million, US dollars, in East London has been put up for sale. In response to the phenomenon of Chinese real estate companies selling off overseas assets to rescue themselves, Goldman Sachs recently warned its clients that China's real estate market is still deteriorating, and it is far from the time of its bottoming out and rebounding. According to Bloomberg, due to concerns about the spillover effects of the Chinese real estate crisis, the UK Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, has planned to review the valuation of private markets, including real estate. The European Central Bank is concerned that banks in the European region may not be able to grasp changes in loan values in a timely manner and take timely action. In fact, the phenomenon of Chinese real estate companies selling off overseas assets in clusters began three years ago. According to statistics compiled by the Chinese public account Wild Horse Finance, from November 2020 to February 22, 2021, well known real estate companies such as Fantasia Holdings, Shermao Group, China Overseas Land and Investment, Agile Group, Chung Kong Property Holdings, and Poly Group were all selling off overseas assets. The project's completed asset transactions and reports of transactions exceeded 12, involving amounts exceeding 50 billion yuan, around 7 billion US dollars. Among them, Vank Group, a well known real estate company that has always adhered to the development principle of seeking stability, also sold its office building Ryder Court in the London city area to MNGTS Ryder Limited at the end of January 2022 for £132 million, approximately US$166 million, US dollars, and publicly stated that the Chinese real estate market has entered the Black Iron Age, continuously shrinking its overseas layout. Truly out of money, netizens flood CCP Ministry of Finance account on fifth day. According to Chinese tradition, there is a custom of welcoming the god of wealth on the fifth day of the first lunar month, February 14. On February 13, the Douyin account of the Chinese Communist Party's Ministry of Finance released a short animated video, inviting netizens to check in at the Ministry of Finance and send blessings for wealth. Then, Party media began to support the CCP authorities and hype up netizens to leave messages on the Ministry of Finance account. Related topics have also trended on Weibo. However, many netizens left messages on the Ministry of Finance account, hoping to get a job that pays taxes, 
reflecting the difficulty in finding a job and low wages in Chinese society. Netizens said, I want a job with weekends off, five social insurances, and one fund, with a post-tax income of no less than 5,000 yuan, approximately 700 US dollars. I want a job with a monthly salary of more than 5,000 yuan, around 700 US dollars, two weekends off, normal holidays. I'm fine with paying some personal income tax every month for 24 years. In mainland China, the starting point for personal income tax is 5,000 yuan, around 700 US dollars. This means that the monthly income of the above-mentioned netizens who made wishes is less than 5,000 yuan. Some netizens remarked on the irony of seeing wealth blessings on WeChat amidst financial struggles. Many demanded repayment from the Ministry of Finance for defaulted government debts and unpaid wages. Criticism was directed at the government's financial management and societal trends, with some humorously noting the irony of the situation. Additionally, there were messages redirecting criticism towards the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, expressing concerns about diplomatic strategies and global relationships. Nearly 70% of people refused to watch CCTV Spring Festival Gala, it's only for party members. This year's CCTV Spring Festival Gala lasted more than five hours, with most of the content filled with propaganda aimed at brainwashing for the Chinese Communist Party. The most controversial program featured the armored troops of the 66477 unit, stationed in Beijing for a long time, appearing on stage with guns and shouting, listen to the party's command. As soon as the program aired, it sparked widespread mockery on X platform, with some people believing that the CCP's top leadership had entered a state of panic during the spring festival. Even the military is brought onto the stage. What is the Communist Party afraid of? After the events of 8964, the soldiers became nothing but the party's guards. The People's Liberation Army no longer exists. Official Chinese media claimed that this year's gala achieved a viewership rate of over 30%. However, a survey conducted by Radio Free Asia on X platform found that as many as 69.2% of the people stated they did not watch the gala, 25% said they watched it but did not like it, only less than 6% said they liked this year's program. Under this survey, many netizens followed up with comments, with some saying, regarding the Spring Festival Gala, it's best to not watch not discuss, and not contribute to its viewership. No matter how the gala changes, how close to the people it claims to be, or how it packages itself, just don't watch. Others commented, haven't watched this gala for many years, it's extremely boring, only suitable for party members to watch. You already know what they're going to perform without watching, it's just a replica of Kim Jong-un's North Korea. The Spring Festival Gala is for the leaders to watch, not for the ordinary people. Angela, 26, told Radio Free Asia that she and her friends all feel that the Spring Festival Gala has become increasingly awkward. She said she hasn't watched it since university, and in recent years, the gala has been boring, awkward, and lacking in novelty. Not only are the jokes not funny, but there's also a strong sense of propaganda, it's like subtly encouraging young people to have children. I don't want to be educated during the Lunar New Year. Wang Jian, a senior media figure based in the United States, told Radio Free Asia that the brainwashing propaganda of the Spring Festival Gala has caused people's resentment. This is part of the brainwashing project, showcasing the path of a strong country and economic achievements through grand narratives. But the problem is, it's not real. Previous Spring Festival Galas also had elements of brainwashing, but the current one is doing it very maliciously. Angela Chow, sister of Elaine Chow, dies in tragic accident. The latest update reveals that Angela Chow, aged 50, the sister of former U.S. Secretary of Transportation and Labor Elaine Chow and a sister-in-law of U.S. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, as well as the chairman of Foremost Group, tragically drowned after driving onto private property. Experts suggest there are numerous uncertainties surrounding Angela Chow's untimely demise, which may have connections to the CCP. The Austin American statesman quoted law enforcement sources, stating that the police do not currently suspect foul play in Angela Chow's death. While the exact cause remains undetermined, it's believed she drove onto private property in Blanco County, Texas, where she tragically drowned. 
According to reports, an investigator in Blanco County mentioned that the sheriff's office is investigating Angela Chow's death but hasn't disclosed any information publicly due to Texas law restrictions, including the location and time of her passing. On February 14, Kyle Bass, founder of Heyman Capital Management, posted on the X platform alleging suspicious circumstances surrounding Angela Chow's demise at a private ranch in Blanco County. Kyle Bass wrote, Chow entered her Tesla and backed into a pond on the ranch and passed away. Chow, almost certainly a high-ranking member of the Chinese Communist Party, she sat on the board of a state-owned company. Angela Chow served as chairman and CEO of Foremost Group, overseeing the family business. Her current husband, investor Jim Breyer, boasts a net worth of $2.9 billion. She was previously married to billionaire banker Bruce Wasserstein, who passed away in 2009, shortly after their marriage. Notably, besides a brief obituary, the Chow family has remained silent regarding the details of the incident, and mainland China's Tsai Xin was among the first to report Angela Chow's fatal accident. According to their report, local authorities stated that Chow was en route to a business meeting in Austin, Texas, when her vehicle was struck by a truck running a red light, resulting in her immediate death. The truck driver was apprehended for drunken driving and manslaughter. However, mainstream U.S. media outlets did not report specific details of Angela Chow's accident, raising suspicions among the public. In an analysis on the 14th, Yakagawa, an expert on China-related issues, raised several doubts regarding Angela Chow's fatal accident. While Tsai Xin reported the specifics of Angela Chow's accident on the 12th, as of the 14th, mainstream U.S. media only covered the accident in general terms, with no precise location or time disclosed. Yakagawa asserted that Tsai Xin's account of the accident lacks credibility. Yakagawa emphasized the credibility of Kyle Bass's claim that Angela Chow drowned at a private ranch and cited former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon's mention of Angela Chow's demise on a private ranch in his self-media program. Yakagawa stated, implying that Angela Chow's death may not have occurred as reported. One of Bannon's guests suggested that the Blanco County Sheriff possesses a video that would be profoundly shocking if released. Yakagawa speculated that the incident may be more complex than a mere car accident. He highlighted the abnormality of only Chinese media outlets reporting on the accident's details while Western mainstream media remained silent. He hinted at potential risks for those associated with the CCP and stressed the importance of keeping a distance from the regime under any circumstances. The CCP's East Factory military expansion, Xi Jinping's chief secretary plays a ruthless role. Since assuming leadership of the Chinese Communist Party, Xi Jinping has increasingly tightened control across various sectors. Some analysts identify four major East factories in China, among which the military's East factory overseen by Xi's chief secretary, Zhong Xiaojun, remains the most enigmatic, playing a ruthless role that strikes fear into the hearts of army lieutenant generals. The East factory or Dongchang, along with two other factories, Xichang and Neixing, collectively guarded by the Jinyui, symbolizes the Ming Dynasty's era of government by spies. In an article published in the Epoch Times on February 13, political commentator Su Ku outlined the emergence of these four major East factories under the leadership of Xi Jinping. The Central Commission for Discipline Inspection has transformed into the primary iteration of the East factory, two new East factories, the Ministry of State Security and the Central Ministry of Social Work now wield knives against society. During Xi Jinping's initial term, the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, led by Wang Chishan, embodied the structure of the East Factory. The members of this commission were likened to contemporary Jini Wei, wielding powers of life and death. Following Wang's tenure, Zhao Liji and Li Shi took charge of the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection. After Xi's close confidant, Li Shi assumed leadership of the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, although numerous officials were arrested over the past year, apprehensions of those above the rank of Central Committee members, such as Qin Gang and Li Shangfu, were officially shrouded in secrecy. Suka's analysis suggests the existence of another special Jini Wei team directly reporting to Xi Jinping, handling such matters. Over the past year, at least a dozen high-ranking figures in the Chinese Communist Party's military and military-industrial complex have been detained. Notably, five rocket force generals were among them. Additionally, Defense Minister Li Shangfu was dismissed, with his predecessor Wei Fenghe implicated in the scandal. 
According to Australian scholar Yuan Hongbing, the recent events concerning the rocket force's top brass transpired due to a report by Li Yuchao's secretary to the Central Military Commission office, labeling Li Yuchao as two-faced. The Military Commission office, under Zhong Xiaojun's control, may function as a Dongchang-style anti-corruption organization within the military. In the CCP, the secretarial system serves as the eyes and ears monitoring leading cadres, particularly at the highest levels. Recently, Xi Jinping's top minister, Kai Qi, assumed control over government secretarial management, a power previously held by Prime Minister Li Chang. However, the military secretarial system, led by Zhong Xiaojun, remains relatively independent. Zhong Xiaojun, Xi's personal secretary in various capacities, rose through military ranks to become a lieutenant general. During Xi's tenure, Zhong played a pivotal role, conducting investigations and amassing evidence against high-ranking figures, solidifying his influence and instilling fear among army generals. Notably, in recent years, several mysterious deaths and suicides among CCP officials, including former Premier Li Keqiang and former Deputy Commander of the Rocket Force Wu Guohua, have raised suspicion. Reports suggest she may have established a full-time assassination department, the Military Commission Operations Bureau, with Zhong potentially wielding significant power within. Furthermore, while figures like Chen Wenqing and Wang Xiaohong were traditionally associated with spy rule, the Ministry of National Security has recently emerged as a dominant player. Under the leadership of Chen Yisen, a close associate of Xi, this ministry may bypass traditional channels of authority, potentially leading to internal strife. In 2023, the CCP established a new Central Ministry of Social Work, touted as a totalitarian patch specializing in social work but bearing characteristics of a spy agency. Led by figures like Kai Chi, this East Factory could serve as a tool for expanding persecution campaigns in the future. Currently, China faces economic decline, rising unemployment, and growing public unrest. Internally, the CCP grapples with escalating tensions, particularly between the Xi family and Xi Jinping's faction, plunging the administration into crisis. The CCP's covert operations, constituting its espionage system, span both domestic and international spheres, leveraging vast networks of agents. However, infighting among intelligence agencies, fueled by Xi's governance challenges, risks exacerbating internal discord. Legal scholar Yuan Hongbing warns of factionalism within the Xi family, necessitating purges to maintain political stability. Yet, such actions may breed complacency and fuel public dissent, potentially leading to uprisings in 2024. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you.